All right, that was the mayor of New York City, de Blasio, speaking there. I'm joined now by correspondent James Reinald. He has been covering this story for us all day in Manhattan. James, it's good to see you. Let's, let's talk about what we saw happen today. I mean, the shock came with reports about these suspicious packages, and then it came to the Time Warner building. Um, but as soon as it happened, almost as fast as it happened, it was also over, it seems. Um, well, the scenes of uh, chaos and confusion that uh, were apparent earlier this morning, about 10 a.m. local time, just after that explosive device was discovered in the mailroom of the Time Warner Center and the CNN offices right behind me over here, um, uh, uh, have, as you say, subsided throughout the day. Here we are several hours after um, uh, the discovery, and the building has now been totally reopened. Office workers have gone back upstairs into their offices. The shopping mall, which was closed for a number of hours behind me just there, um, has also reopened. Um, there were fire trucks and chemical weapons experts and so on uh, throughout the day, um, doing their work, doing their investigations. And I think the fact that, you know, you can see behind me now, we've got a perfectly regular working street. The police presence seems to have uh, um, uh, gone away. The, the uh, security services are uh, sure that the building is now safe and that they've actually gathered all the information and evidence that they need from that mail room related to the package, related to the explosive device and this white powder um, that, uh, that was found in an envelope around it. And now the story, and I guess the investigation moves on to what happens next, to looking at that evidence, to looking at the evidence that's been collected in other parts of the country all across the eastern seaboard, these series of um, explosive devices in the mail. And uh, it's a job now for the investigators to piece together exactly what happened and, more importantly, who was behind it. Yeah, I mean, that's a very good point. And, you know, earlier in the day, James, we really didn't know um, how this um, story was going to turn because there was a message that was sent out, text messages to everyone in New York, telling them if they were in the area where you are, that they should seek shelter um, immediately. And that's because they believed that the bomb, that explosive in that package, they believed that it could go off any moment, didn't they? Well, I mean, that is the nature of explosive devices. Of course, they can explode. And uh, some of these devices, although they were crude, we've had a photograph circulated on them, of them on social media. They do not look like they were made by a professional bomb-making outfit, but they were clearly designed to do harm. Inside some of them, for example, were shards of glass. And this is a typical thing in the, in the structure of a pipe bomb to magnify the impact. I mean, I guess the most important thing that we can say uh, about... Uh, about what's happened throughout the day, um, and this is, I guess, to some extent, a silver lining about that, is that although there have been a number of bombs that made it through the mail and did get intercepted, none of them actually did go off, and all of them were intercepted, and now all of them can be studied by investigators, forensics teams, and so on, looking for fingerprints or any evidence that can uh, uh, give us a clue as to, uh, 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 as, as to how this came about. And we still don't know um, who sent these packages, um, which, of course, leaves a lot of unknowns, a lot of uncertainties in this story. What are people there in Manhattan, what are they telling you? Do they feel secure after what they experienced today? I mean, are they certain that tomorrow there won't be a repeat of what happened? Well, I don't think anybody can be certain that, uh, that this won't happen again. Of course, um, uh, the, uh, uh, the mail bombs uh, have been uh, going throughout the week. I think the first one was, uh, was on Monday, and that was to the liberal billionaire George Soros. Um, uh, so are there more uh, packages? This is one question that is going to be asked, for sure. The investigators are definitely on that. When it comes to New Yorkers and how secure they feel, uh, of course, there's a degree of unflappability to New Yorkers. They've seen 9-11. They've seen the Faisal Shazad Times Square bombing. They've seen people driving trucks down pedestrian walkways, mowing over pedestrians. These are ultimately bombs that didn't go off. And as you can see from behind me, life has returned to normal. But when it comes to investigators, they're going to be looking at the evidence they've got in their hands. They're going to be looking at any forensic clues that can trace where it's from. And also, they're going to be looking at the broader political environment in which this has happened. If you look through the uh, organizations that keep a track of the terrorist attacks that happen in the United States, there are three types of organizations and groups that tend to be behind them. One of them is Islamic extremists, and the other two are nationalists, whether they be white nationalists or black nationalist groups too. And it's going to be investigators who are going to be looking at this looking at who has been targeted, 
all individuals and organizations from the left of American politics. Mm. And these are all going to be clues that are going to help uh, investigators hone in on who was behind it. Our correspondent James Ryan along the story for us tonight in Manhattan. We certainly do appreciate your coverage today, James. Thank you.